when I started work on Friedas in 1994, I was an undergraduate physics student at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. And as an undergraduate physics student, I got a lot of mileage out of a program called Mercury. Uh, Mercury is a program that's called an equation solver. And it means you can put in different equations and some conditions, and the program will churn through and try and work out a numerical solution uh, to suit all of those equations and those conditions. Very, very helpful if you're doing uh, lab analysis or you're trying to drive some equations. You need to figure out the solutions uh, very quickly. Uh, and Mercury was a, a great equation solver. And of course, it, it fit the budget because it was shareware. So shareware means that you can try it out for a little while. And if you like it, you should register the, the program with the author. Uh, and they typically had a, a low cost uh, registration fee. Now, Mercury, by the way, didn't originally start out as shareware. Mercury was originally Borland Eureka. And when Borland uh, stopped working on Eureka so they could focus on, you know, spreadsheets and databases and other programs like that, uh, they spun it off and it got picked up by Roger Schlafly. And he turned this into uh, the shareware product of Mercury. So it's basically Eureka. So you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, origins from Eureka. So let's go ahead and look at what Mercury looked like, kind of how I probably used it when I was uh, an undergraduate physics student. So here I have uh, my uh, command prompt, and let's take a look at the files here. Now, uh, Roger has released a version of this that is uh, freeware. Uh, it's uh, free for personal and educational use, but I remembered the shareware version, so I've installed the shareware version here. Uh, apparently, it's, uh, it should be just the same. Uh, so you can see here a lot of different files. Now, uh, there are no TXT files, and the one thing that uh, that was common at the time is documentation wasn't always in a text file, a TXT file. Typically it was in a file that was uh, with .do, .doc, and that's just a plain text file. Let's take a look at this here. So if I look at um, the vendor doc, so vendor.doc, uh, so this is a document that just tells you about what the program is, and this was really intended for uh, people who ran shareware websites or wasn't even websites at the time. It was just like uh, you know FTP sites or, or distribution catalogs and things like that. And so this was uh, an information that that they needed to be able to put it in the catalog registry correctly. So this is a complete program for doing equation solving and graphics on the PC. It requires uh, a PC with 640k of memory. Shareware registration fee is uh, forty nine dollars. Of course, there you can see it's similar to Borland's Eureka. Uh, you can download it uh, and use it for uh, for free for examination purposes. And of course, if you're going to use it, uh, you should register the software. Uh, down here is the contact information. There's Roger Schlafly. Uh, now, if I look at uh, the doc files again, there's a registration form right there called register.docs. We'll look at that one here, register.doc. And so this is the registration form that you would print out and send in with your check. And so you can see here the license for Mercury was $49. Uh, I looked it up. The original uh, uh, license cost for Eureka, Borland Eureka, was $99.95. So we're looking at half the cost for Borland Eureka. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, CompuServe and a Genie address. Now there's, that takes me back. So um, there's your uh, registration form and uh, it tells you what you're going to get if you register the software. So you get the latest version of the software uh, and eligible for technical support. And you'll be on a mailing list for future information updates. So, uh, you know, pretty common for uh, shareware to have kind of those extra bonuses, but basically what you're doing is you're getting the full version by registering the software. There is also a, uh, a file uh, called manual that doesn't have a .doc extension. Um, and so that is the full manual for uh, using Mercury. And so if you want to explore Mercury, I would take a look at this manual document. It is, uh, it is quite long, uh, but it's very uh, descriptive about what, uh, what it will do. So let's go ahead and just control C out of that and do one more here. And you can see there's a readme file. Uh, it actually is readable using the readme.com uh, program. So we can run readme. And so there's the readme file. Uh, really re repeat of what we've basically been looking at. Mercury is a, an update of your Borland Eureka 1.0. Uh, and there's the contact info for uh, Roger Schlafly. And then uh, oh, no, uh, known problems, uh, defective coprocessors, uh, but otherwise uh, looks like it's a uh, pretty functional application. Uh, it uses a lot of memory, and that might be the reason that it actually runs a little slow for me. So as I'm typing in 
uh, equations. It's not that I'm being a slow typist. It's that the system is taking a little while to respond to it. So we'll see that in just a second. Uh, and uh, as was common for a lot of uh, shareware programs, the, the author uh, is a member of the Association of Shareware Professionals. Uh, and that was basically an organization that uh, represented uh, shareware authors so that we didn't have to uh, you know, get involved, or at least it took some of the weight off of being a, share, a shareware author. Uh, also a member of the League for Programming Freedom, which is a different thing set up by uh, Richard Stallman and somebody else, I can't remember who it was, uh, basically fighting software patents at the time. Let's escape out of that. Uh, before I uh, go into the program itself, I just want to do one more directory and, and point out we've got a bunch of these .eka files. So eka, uh, y directory. And so we'll look at that in a second, but those are all files that uh, are Eureka uh, problem files that, that Mercury can use to uh, solve. Uh, we're going to look at that bumpy.eka uh, in a little while, uh, but these are basically text files. So you can actually do a type on uh, say bumpy.eka. And you can see this is just a problem file uh, that in this case is defining a function called bumpy, uh, which is a function of X. Uh, and then it, it tells the system to go ahead and, and plot it uh, with various bounds. So uh, let's, uh, let's now go ahead and run uh, the, um, uh, the Mercury program. So we'll go ahead and run Mercury. So you just saw the little uh, splash page up there that lets you know this is a shareware program. Uh, before I go into the program itself, there is uh, help over here on the right hand side. So I just highlighted that and just hit return. You can see uh, different uh, help topics in the, uh, in the application. So you can look at the different menus and you can see the different expressions you can solve down here. Uh, the functions that it has, so I'll hit return on that. Uh, different functions that you can see inside, uh, inside Mercury. Uh, hit F1 to go back to the index. Uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and do an escape to get out of that. So what you'll need to do is uh, it's, it's kind of like a mode based editor like VI where you, you're in one mode or you're in another mode. And so in this case, you're either in the menu or you're not in the menu. So uh, there's no like bringing up the menu. You have to escape out of a window to get back to the menu. But right now we're in menu mode because you can see the uh, menu moving around as I uh, hit my keys. Let's go into the edit menu. So we're going to do uh, edit up here on the menu and hit return. And now that highlights the uh, edit box. So what are some things you can do in this? Uh, and by the way, it's selected. This is going to be called no name.eka if I, if I choose to save it. Uh, so what are some things you can do with this? So maybe you, you're trying to do a, a simple uh, evaluation of a function. And so, you know, maybe you're looking at the gravity function or the, the physics equations of motion, uh, where Y is, um, minus a times t squared um, plus a uh, velocity times time. And uh, maybe we have an initial uh, condition in there, but it might be zero. So that would be the other thing you'd have on there is an initial uh, y position. Uh, and then you'd want to put in some values. And so you might say, uh, well, what's it look like at uh, t equals um, half a second and the acceleration to gravity. What is the acceleration to gravity? Acceleration is, uh, we'll call it uh, 9.8, which is pretty close. And what was my velocity in this case? Well, the velocity might have been, uh, let's just say, let's just give it a number of, let's say two. And so now I've put in an equation and various conditions. And this is just a very straightforward evaluation. Uh, to calculate y. And so I want to go ahead and, and solve for that. So let's go ahead and hit escape. That brings me up under the menu up on top. And I'll go over to solve and hit return. And so it's just going to do a straight calculation of what we uh, find in there. So now we're, it's, it's uh, activated the solution window on the bottom. Uh, and you can see the solution to the problem is it's minus 1.45. Uh, there's telling you the, uh, the vari other variables, uh, you know, acceleration was uh, 9.8. Uh, and on the right hand side, it's telling you what that actually would have worked out to um, as a fraction of, of, of regular numbers. And so, yep, 9.8 is 49 divided by 5. Uh, and there's T and V. And then down below, it's got residuals and derived equations. Uh, so, this is kind of helpful if you are trying to work out, um, you know, the solution to a, a problem and you uh, maybe 
this is maybe a little too simple because you could just plug in these numbers in your calculator on your own, but uh, that's something that uh, that you could certainly run. Let's try another one here. Let's let's go up, hit escape, go back up to the menu. Uh, I'm just going to clear that out just by choosing a new one here. So let's do file new, uh, and I don't want to save that one, so I'll do N on that. All right, so uh, let's go back into the edit uh, window. And so let's say you want to see where two functions intercept. And so maybe we've got uh, y equals, uh, let's do a cosine function. So it's the cosine of x, but it's we're not going to center it on zero. We're going to uh, actually push it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and, and add five to that. And then uh, we're going to also do another one, which is a line. And we'll just say y in this case is uh, x, um, well, let's say minus one. And you could solve this graphically. You could just, you know, draw it out and see where uh, y equals x minus one and where y equals the cosine of x plus five, where they happen to intersect. Uh, you could also uh, try to do various other things by, uh, you know, solving for x on the bottom uh, and then plugging that into uh, the first equation, and that would allow you to solve for uh, y. Uh, or you could just plug it into Mercury and have Mercury do it. So now we've entered that, we'll hit escape, and we'll go back into solve. And you can see on the bottom, it's telling you uh, what, the, uh, what the solution is. So the answer is uh, y equals 5.8458 and some other stuff. Uh, and that's the value of x. And uh, down below, of course, it's telling you the residuals and derived equations. Um, and so it's figured out um, yep, it basically took the bottom equation and it solved, um, and, uh, for y, and then it was able to, or, or um, it was able to uh, basically put those two equations together. Uh, actually it was able to say cosine, um, the first equation, since they're both equal to y, it was able to actually just plug those together. And then from there, uh, solve for a value of x. That actually is, uh, way to do it as well. Uh, and so down here you can see the different uh, residuals and other information that are uh, pulled about the, uh, about the equation. Let's do another one. So let's hit escape and we'll go over to uh, file and uh, let's start a new uh, solution. Uh, don't save that one. Let's start up a new one. Uh, so now we've started a new one. Let's, let's look at uh, two lines or not lines, but curves. And, uh, oops, that, that's nothing to solve here. Do an edit. Uh, so, um, over to edit here. Uh, let's do a curve that is just y equals the uh, cosine of x. And then we'll do a, no, oops, misspelled that. And cosine of x. And then uh, let's do another uh, value here where uh, uh, x is the uh, cosine of y. And so that's an interesting uh, graph because uh, you have uh, the cosine function running uh, left to right, but you also have the cosine function running uh, uh, up and down. And how do you solve that? Well, you basically, uh, could solve that, and, and Eureka is going to solve it by taking the bottom equation and just saying, okay, well, x equals cosine of y, so it's going to plug it up to the top and say uh, y equals the cosine of the cosine of y, uh, and then find a value for where they happen to be the same value. So where is where does y equal cosine of the cosine of y? Um, that's an interesting equation. And it ends up, I think, being a little more interesting to look at that solution. So we'll do escape, and we'll go over to solve, and uh, we'll hit return. So that'll uh, now uh, turn through the solution, and you can see that uh, the value is uh, y and x is the uh, 0.739085, and so on. And in fact, if you uh, put that into a spreadsheet, and you say, what is the uh, cosine of 0.739851? And then do the cosine again. Yeah, that actually continues. It, it is the, uh, that is the value that stays, the, 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 uh, the value of that x is the value that comes out of the cosine of x. Uh, and so down below, of course, you can see uh, the different uh, residuals and derived equations. And so this is very helpful 
uh, as I said in physics, to try and look at uh, problem sets and uh, uh, get a jump on on, uh, on solving some of those interesting equations. Now let's look at uh, a, a, an existing problem file. So let's hit escape to get back to the menu. Let's actually do a chart. And so uh, we're going to do a file and we're going to do a load. Now it doesn't have a browser, so you have to kind of know what a file browser. You have to kind of know what file you want to look at. So uh, I looked at uh, Bumpy. Ends up being an interesting chart, so we'll look at that. So bumpy.eka, return on that, and uh, no, the current uh, file, I should not save that, so end for that. So here we've loaded bumpy.eka. So uh, this uh, uh, is uh, defining a function called bumpy, and uh, it's doing it in a slightly different way than we had done it before, because this is defining a function, basically like f of x, uh, in this case, it's bumpy of x, uh, and then it's going to tell Mercury to plot this function using those bounds and those number of points. So what you'll do is you uh, to to do something like this, you want to define the function. This is defining a function using a colon equal, and then we want to go into solve. And then once you've solved it, uh, it basically will uh, has now worked out all the math it needs to do behind the scenes to go over to graph and now we can do a view and so now as he gets uh, this is what that uh, that function looks like now uh, if I were to uh, hit escape and get back out of that I probably should have shown you what it looks like uh, in the menus if I didn't have that so let's go ahead and uh, reload that file uh, and yeah the reason you needed to run that solve first is if you go over to the graph menu uh, it's uh, it's all disabled because you can't view it yet because it needs to be solved first. So again, you go back to solve, and it solves the equation, and then uh, hit escape to get back into the menu, and then go over to graph, and then you're gonna view it. So this was also very helpful if you're trying to uh, graph something for a physics uh, project. Uh, this allows you to uh, create a chart of it, uh, and you can include that in your uh, in your lab homework. So. Just wanted to show off what Mercury kind of looks like. I'll put a link to uh, where you can download a copy of Mercury. Uh, right now, I'll go ahead and exit out of the program. And that was it for this week. So before I close, I just want to uh, thank everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Uh, your support really means the world to me, and you really are making this channel happen. So thank you very much for that. Uh, some of you are supporting me at a higher level, and I want to thank you here. So thank you very much for that as well. Visit our website at freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.